Praise be Jesus Christ. On this 15th day, uh, on our journey through the wilderness, we begin to sense tensions rising in Jacob's house. The house is under fire. Brothers want to kill their brother because he's loved more than themselves. In the meantime, the Pharisees and scribes are also finally ready to arrest Jesus. So anytime there is fire on the mountain. This wonderful depiction of Joseph on the throne finally is a wonderful reminder in this story about Joseph that no matter what happens, what God has meant for you shall be for you, regardless of what anybody does or anybody thinks, anybody wants or doesn't want. Something I find so refreshing is the fact that both Jesus and Joseph are innocent victims. They are being punished for being their father's beloved sons. For both of them, jealousy by those who are supposed to be the inner circle is evident. For both of them, the trouble is within. Jesus, one of his own Judas Iscariot, betrayed him. Simon denied him. The rest scattered. Even the chief priests, they were behind the plot to eliminate Jesus. For Joseph, it is his own family that plots. His own brothers, own brothers think of killing him. They set up for throwing him in the pit before they decide to sell him off. His own family. In both scenarios, there is an interplay between love, jealousy, and betrayal, and the other things that come thereafter. And these experiences are not unique to Jesus or to Joseph alone. The love, jealousy, betrayal, powerfully plots to murder by the most trusted, all in a family, are still prevalent today. Sibling lively, family wrangles, heartbreaks. Perhaps you are just recovering from a betrayal or a rejection or an evil mastermind. And now one comes to understand even better why we need this season of Lent. One needs to gather strength in this season of Lent. It's a time to gather strength, a time to gather wisdom, a time to position oneself right for the grace needed to keep our focus in the midst of such storms. Storms of abuse, storms of rejection, storms of plots to murder you are common, but they often come from the least anticipated of places and persons. When your own brothers, sisters, church leaders or civil leaders, mother, father, uncle, niece, etc. comes to attack you or plans to kill you, when the one you offered your love decides to cheat on you, how do you handle that? Let us use this occasion to pray for our families and the people we come to trust as partners, as colleagues, as leaders. An attack from within, or from the inner circle is the hardest to fight. When your own people turn against you, the pain is deep, the trust is gone, and you're left shattered. But the good news is, Jesus went through it all. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. So he understands it and has offered himself to us as that friend, that brother who can never forsake us, who, has, who can never forget us. And actually the Lord already has talked about this in Isaiah 49, 15. He says, Never can a mother forget her little child and not have love for her own. Yet even if that should be, I'll not forget you. And he goes on to say, Behold, I have engraved you, inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are always before me. What a friend we have in Jesus. In the midst of so much rejection, fear, frustration, and plots to murder, to destroy, to fail us, we have a friend we can rely on who will never forget us or give up on us. And this Lord promises to be with us even through the toughest of moments. Is it Isaiah 43 verse 2? When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you go through the waters, the rivers of difficulty, you'll not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, 
you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. And this is the story of Joseph depicts the Lord fulfilling this promise. He comes through on this promise. Joseph had a dream, as you all know the story, Genesis 37. And his greatness was revealed to him through the dreams. And when he spoke out, he was both ridiculed and hated even more. And something more interesting here. Those who hated Joseph, his brothers and, and family, they didn't believe that his dream was possible. Why is it that the haters, they don't believe you, but still they hate you? Anyway, but the good news is here. As you can see on this wonderful image from Outlaw Bible Images, that no amount of hate would stop Joseph from getting to his throne. No amount of hatred was enough to stop God's plan for Joseph. And as they plotted to kill him, God placed Reuben, one of his brothers, to save him by suggesting that they throw him into a pit. God made sure that there is not even water in that pit. Although they sold him off into slavery, still Joseph landed into an officer's house. And God's face, grace manifested. The master's household prospered because Joseph, a man of favor, was in there. And when even Potiphar's wife lied against Joseph, oh man, he was thrown in prison, yeah. But not even these lies or this imprisonment stopped him. You see, God is walking with him through the pit, through the fire, through the lies, through the prisons. And he's with him. But one may wonder, uh, did, why did God allow these things to happen if he really loved him that much? I can think of two reasons. One, if God allows floods to surround you, it's because he knows that your enemies cannot swim. So wait on him in the floods. Keep flooding. Keep praying. Keep doing the best that you can to survive. He has your back covered as long as you're still true and faithful to him. He will come for you. He's plotting your escape, your next step. Secondly, the comfort of Joseph's family would have delayed or derailed, if not denied Joseph the courage to go after his destiny. How would he have stepped into Egypt? He's from Israel. How would he have stepped across to Egypt if not through this hatred and, 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 and being sold into slavery? I believe God allowed it as all as a stepping stone. This brings to mind Romans 8 to 8. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So, other than complaining or fighting with God and throwing temper tantrums against God when tough times or storms, rejections, our pit moments come when lies are made against us or we're imprisoned for what we've not done. When we are forgotten by those we have done favors to, let us instead draw closer to the Lord as we await on Him to reveal the next plan for us. By the way, remember, Romans 8, 28 is not saying that all things work together to them for the good, for good to them. He doesn't say that all good things happen, only good things happen. No, no, no. He's only saying that. And he's not saying that uh, bad things will not happen. All he's saying, no matter what happens, good or bad, it will work in your favor as long as you're still true and faithful to him. So simply trust him. Simply trust him. More lessons that can be drawn from this book, uh, Genesis 37 and uh, this Joseph's story. Yeah, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his brothers, his sons. Dear parents, it's okay to love your children, but favoring one over the others will backfire on you. Don't compare them. Don't pamper one over the others. Don't use your children to, as a spy network over others. Use, as, use, use other means. And that's where Jacob suffered it. He's the one who cried the most. He's the one who refused to eat. He thought he had lost his life because he just misfired on this point. Secondly, Joseph's mother was different. Jacob, it is reported, had concubines. Although every family has issues, but on average, a polygamous family 
is a battlefront. Polygamous families are battlefields. Some are unique and special granted. But although siblings from the same dad and mom can fight or hate each other, but the, a, a, a polygamous situation gets worse. Thirdly, so better to avoid it to the best of our ability. Let us do it God's way. One man, one woman, stick to that. You minimize the trouble. Verse 5 of this story, Joseph revealed his dreams to his brothers. My friend, your dreams are your own. Don't reveal them anyhow. The enemy cannot hit what cannot attack what they don't know. You're revealing your dreams so now they know what to attack. Don't reveal your dreams anyhow. Reveal them. Ask the Lord to show you who to work with, who to reveal the dreams to. That's why when Jesus was born, not everyone received the information immediately. Not even the king. It was the shepherds. Jesus, God knew what he was doing. He knew that the king was a dream killer. He was going to kill the child. But the shepherds were going to worship the child and support the child with gold, incense, and mirror. Not everyone must know your dream. Not everyone must know your gift. Some of us, our speech, our words are the ones that are killing us. We speak too much. I plan to do that. This is happening. I'm hoping. Please keep your hopes to you and your God. Third, verse 14, prudence. Jacob sends his son to his brothers, but I believe he knew the tension between them. Why do you risk your, your son? It's, this gift is called prudence. If they hate you, don't expose yourself to them without precaution. Be alert and sensitive. For Joseph, maybe poison was not among the weapons used. But in our time, everything is on the table. There is assassination, there is poison, even abortion, even uh, homicides, even imprisonment. Drones are there. Everything is on the table. If you know they, you suspect they hate you, be prudent. The other point, be a Reuben to somebody. If you learn of a plot to kill somebody, why not find a way of diverting the murder they're in? Like Reuben suggested something less. Lesser evil, as you plan on how to, 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 to save this person. But like Reuben, be smart. Don't expose yourself as you try to save somebody. Because then we might lose you. Suggest so something that kind of is in line with something they're planning. But in the process of saving somebody, as you plan what to do next. The other point. Joseph was thrown into a well. He could have thought that God had forgotten him. But little did he know that this pit was the alternative to being killed. Don't complain. Cherish your pit. You might be crying thinking that God has forsaken you. Yet actually, that is the step of saving you from the graver danger. You know what? It could have been worse. And in the hands of strangers, the next point. Don't be rude to them. Do not let the evil people around you diminish the goodness in you. Because among those strangers is a blessing in disguise. Uh, you know, mango trees never return stones when stones are thrown to them. They release mangoes because by their nature, they are mango things. Anyway, the other point, the God who never forgets his own finally made a way for Joseph, you know, the precious gift of dream interpretation is what God used uh, to, to, to get him to his position. Do you remember those many gifts you have? The skills? Actually, the good things you can do naturally. Some of which you are no longer do because you are annoyed with people or with God. Yes, those gifts. They are part of the package that will get you to your throne. Your skills, your gifts are part of the, your toolbox. Unload it. Unpack it. Make use of it. And Jesus says that if you don't use it, Matthew 21, I tell you then, if you don't use, make use of what I've given you, it will be taken away from you. And Galatians 5, you know, 22, 23 reminds us of the fruits of this kingdom. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, and all those gifts. Let us pray for the grace that we may remain firm and strong in the Lord no matter what comes our way. And we may choose to trust him always. Amen. Shalom.